Earlier this year, Denver Zoo hatched, raised, and released more than 600 boreal toads into their natural habitat of Utah. It was one of the biggest conservation success stories of the year here at Denver Zoo and a huge breakthrough for this at-risk species. And we're getting ready to try it all over again in 2020. So what is a boreal toad? Why do they matter? And how did Denver Zoo become the first institution to successfully breed this population? Let's find out. Welcome back to DZTV. I'm your host, Carly McGuire. Maybe you've never heard of the boreal toad, but it is a species in crisis. Well, the boreal toad is found throughout the western United States, and basically these um, amphibians are high elevation amphibian uh, above 7,000 feet, and they're in decline because they are getting infected with a fungus called chytrid that is spreading throughout their habitat. And we've seen declines over the last couple of decades to the species and they're becoming isolated populations and it's a, a big deal. And Denver Zoo is one of several AZA institutions trying to help breed this specific population found in Utah. Utah Division of Wildlife and Resources contacted us and we're asking help get involved with a assurance population to basically bring in toads to the Denver Zoo to eventually reproduce them um, to be put back into the wild. Well, when they came to us, they were metamorphs, very young frogs, and we brought them in in 2010, so we needed to wait four or five, six years before they had reached uh, breeding maturity. Denver Zoo tried for two years to breed these toads. In 2018, curator of ectotherms Tom Weaver and tropical discovery specialist Derek Kossaboon asked our reproductive specialist, Dr. Annika Moresco, if she could step in. And I contacted some other zoos to try to get a good protocol that we could use that had been successful previously. A protocol is like a recipe, so basically I needed to get from Detroit Zoo which hormones to use, how much, how often, that kind of stuff, so that we could replicate that exactly in our toads and have it be successful. Before we could use the hormones, the toads needed to hibernate at a cozy 35 degrees from October to April. And it's more about uh, adjusting their internal clock. So we'll stimulate them to reproduce when they come out of hibernation. Dr. Moresco gave the injections over the course of a week in April of this year after the toads came out of hibernation. And Derek was shocked when he came into work a few days after the last injection. Oh, it was very exciting. Um, I went to do my morning checks and saw between 12 to 1500 eggs and a pair of toads in Amplexus. So we had a, a good idea that they would be fertile. So I immediately called Tom and Annika, uh, Dr. Moresco with the good news. We were very surprised because what we were expecting was to have to go through a few trial and error years, you know, inject them, have them lay eggs that may not be viable. Or... Excitement was high. But there was a lot of work to be done to get as many eggs possible to the toad stage. And it took everyone on our tropical discovery team to make it happen. It wasn't just Derek and Annika and I, it was our whole team that was helping out with this. Um, whether or not they were down there taking care of toads, they were probably covering on another side of the other side of the zoo because it was taking so much time. More than 600 eggs made it to the toadlet stage. And before long, it was time to hit the road and get these toads to Utah. That was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, to be able to release toads that we reproduced at the Denver Zoo and put them back in the wild is basically, I felt like the biggest part of my job. You're high right there. And now we're getting ready to do it all over again. The toads just went into hibernation, into a refrigerator set at 35 degrees. It may seem low tech, but all these toads need is a cold, quiet place to sleep until the spring. And this time, we're hoping for even more toads to release. You know, I'd like to see us, you know, sending out um, thousands and thousands of tadpoles and putting them in the water. Make sure to follow Denver Zoo on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates about our Boreal Toad program. And for more stories like this, make sure to subscribe to Denver Zoo on YouTube.